Well, hello everybody, and welcome to the first tutorial of our brand new chapter, a little bit of chapter 2, 3, and 4. This first tutorial is going to have us properly communicate with set and interval notation. So this topic can actually be found in the appendix in the back of our pre-calculus book. It is appendix A.8 if you need a refresher on this. You should have come to class knowing about set notation and interval notation from your Algebra 2 class or possibly from your Algebra 1 class. We're talking about domain right now. And when we're talking about domain, we're talking about the set of all x values. that satisfy our function. So basically, every x value that works in our function, every x value that, that creates a possible output. If I'd like, to, I'd like to look at this f of x equals 5x divided by 3 mi minus x function, and I'd like to talk about the domain of that, we're going to talk about it in set notation and in interval notation. Okay, so when we're looking at this function, hopefully your eyes are first looking at the denominator. Since there is a denominator, there's a possibility that we have a domain restriction. And I bet you're already thinking what number x cannot be. x can be every number except for one value. And that value, I hope that you're thinking, is the value of 3. If x were 3, then our denominator would become 3 minus 3. And of course, 3 minus 3 is 0. And that is the one no-no in algebra, in math, in life. You cannot divide by 0. It just does not make any sense. So x cannot be 3. x can be every other number that we know, any other real number that we know, except for 3. So let's first talk about how to describe that in set notation. Set notation uses our fancy little set marks. They're called braces. They are not parentheses. They are not brackets. They are these squiggly little things called braces. Okay, So that's how we do all set notation. And then we need to know what variable we're talking about. Since we're talking domain, we're talking about x. And then we do a little such that line. So the beginning of all set notations will always look like this, for domain at least, the set of all x such that. And then we're going to describe what is in the domain or what is not in the domain, however you want to describe it, right here, and then we're going to close the set. So in this case, we know that x cannot be equal to 3, so I'm simply going to put x cannot be equal to 3. And then I'm going to close my set with our fancy little brace again. This is our set notation. Let me read it once again. The set of all x such that x is not equal to 3, and then I close the set. Oftentimes, not all the time, but oftentimes I'm using set notation actually to describe what's not in the domain. Often, set notation, we describe what is in the domain by stating what is not in the domain, if, if that makes sense. Let me write this down and then explain it again. Um, often we describe what is in the domain by stating what is not in the domain. Because I'm going to give you the choice to use set notation or interval notation just whenever it makes sense for you, I'm, going to, I'm telling you right now, I usually use set notation when I'm describing the domain of a function that has um, a denominator, such that there's a number that x cannot be. I usually use set notation for that, because it just seems a little bit more concise. We'll, we'll see this with more practice. So often we're using set notation to describe what is in the domain by stating what is not in the domain. Okay, if we wanted to talk about interval notation, interval gives all the intervals of, of real numbers that x can be. And since we're only talking about restricting 3 from our interval, if we had our entire number line of numbers, all we're doing is taking the 3 out. So the very first number on our number line is negative infinity. Okay, I sort of just lied to you. Negative infinity is not a number on our number line. It's a concept on our number line. More with that later. So we're going from negative infinity all the way up to the value of 3. But since 3 cannot be in the domain, I'm putting a parenthesis right here in my interval. A parenthesis means that it's not included. So this is an interval that describes all numbers less than 3. 
from negative infinity all the way to 3. Obviously, there are more because there's all the numbers greater than 3. So I do need another interval, and therefore I need my union symbol. It kind of looks like a U for union. This is our union symbol. It does not have the little tail. You're not actually writing the letter U. It just looks like a U it's for union. Okay. This is what links a bunch of different intervals together. So since we're talking about the numbers that are less than 3, over here we're going to talk about all the numbers that are greater than 3. So from 3 all the way to infinity. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the parentheses. The parentheses means that we're not including the values. On the negative infinity and the positive infinity, we always will use parentheses because, once again, they are not numbers, they are concepts. They're not numbers that we'll ever touch because it's a concept, so we'll always use a parenthesis on the infinities. Here, on the 3 and the 3, we're using parentheses because, of course, that's the one restriction of our um, domain. So if I were to look at this on our number line, we're talking about, here's 3, we're talking about every number is good all the way up until we get to 3, which we need a nice big open dot, but then every other number after that is good. So we're talking from negative infinity all the way down here, all the way to 3, and then picking back up, well, to, to just to just right before 3, so we're using our parentheses, and then after 3, we're picking it up and going the rest of the way to our positive infinity. So this is maybe a more visual of what we're doing. So interval notation really is just stating what is in the domain, and set notation sometimes is saying what's in it by saying what's not in it. It's all x's except for this one. So if you need a refresher on interval notation, please go back to the appendix in the back of our textbook. I actually went to the, um, a search engine and just typed in interval notation, and it pulled up a pretty cool website called Cool Math. <laughs> Okay, it's coolmath.com, and it gave this nice little example here. So if we're looking at this, this technically isn't set notation because I don't have my set marks, but it's um, an interval of numbers here from 0. Uh, 0 is less than or equal to x, which is less than 4. We all know how to graph this. We would put a closed dot on our 0, um, and we'd graph everything in green here. Okay, everything in green here to the open dot on 4. We use a closed dot on the 0 because we're including that value, and we're using an open dot on the 4 because we're not including that value. Okay, if we wanted to do this in set notation, we'd be having a bracket on our 0 and a parenthesis on our 4. So this is an interval notation describing all numbers in between 0 and 4 that includes the 0 but does not include the 4. So we use our brackets, we use the, uh, the, these two brackets if we're including our values, meaning that we have a less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, and we use parentheses for ones that are just strictly less than or strictly greater than. So again, I just used coolmath.com and search for that topic if you need a quick refresher on that. Okay, so given that, I'd like for you to try these three um, problems. I'd like for you to describe each in set notation and in interval notation. So I want a set notation for each one and an interval notation for each one. If you could please pause the video at this point and try your hand at these three. Thank you. Pause. Okay, so if you're having any trouble on these, I've done the second one for you. So if I'm going to do set notation, set notation is pretty simple because really all I need to do is take the given inequality and just put the little set marks and my x such that. So nothing really changes there. x is greater than 5, x is greater than 5. I just need to do the set of all x's such that that's true and then close the set. So that's not too bad. If I'm doing interval notation, I do need to know which side of 5 I'm talking about. So since x is greater than 5, I'm talking about the numbers that are greater than 5. So that means I'm starting with a 5 and I'm not stopping until I get to infinity. I'm using a parenthesis on the 5 because I'm not including the 5 and of course a parenthesis on the infinity. So if that makes more sense now, why don't you try A again and C again. Pause now. 
Okay, thank you for trying these, and here are our answers. Again, set notation is pretty simple. You just put the set marks in the X such that, so there you go. On this one, a closed dot or a bracket on the negative 2 because we get to include it, but a parenthesis on the 1. There's our interval notation. And over here, remember, if we're talking about less than or equal to 4, we're talking about going um, down this way to negative infinity. So that's why our interval notation needs to start at negative infinity and go up to the 4 again with a bracket there. So that is the end of our set and interval notation tutorial and um, I'll see you pretty soon to talk more about the set notation and interval notation with domain restrictions. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. Oh, no, please. Oh, sit down, sit down. You're, you're too kind. You're too kind. Oh, I'm glad that you had a good time. Okay. <laughs> Bye.